guys, this is Comic Uno, and today I'm doing Comic Uno's Best Comics of the Week, and this is the show where I review all the comics I've read this week in one show. We go least favorite to Best Pick of the Week and everything in between. And before I get started, we do have the Viewer's Pick of the Week at the end of the episode. So in the comments below, let me know your Pick of the Week for a chance to be featured on the episode. Now let's jump into this week's comics, which was uh, kind of a lower haul for... Honestly, everybody I've talked to, it's uh, one of those fifth uh, Wednesdays, I believe. And then uh, a lot of specials came out, uh, some issue ones, but uh, not a huge uh, comic book haul for a lot of people, like I mentioned. So let's jump into this week's books, though, because there's a lot of uh, bigger books. And, and when I say bigger books, I mean large books <laughs> uh, that came out this week. So number eight is one of those large books, a special Superman World War, I'm sorry, War, War World Apocalypse, issue one. And uh, I have not been following Action Comics, but I wanted to read up on uh, Superman returning to Earth. I wanted to pick it up because I've been hearing good things about it. Uh, and I thought maybe this would be a good jumping on point because it's a special. And again, there wasn't a lot of books coming out this week. So I, I decided to try it out. And I don't think this is necessarily a bad issue. Just as someone coming from the perspective of not reading the rest of it, uh, I was a little... Uh, uninvested with it and I don't think there was any huge moments as just a Superman fan of what happened it's just like okay cool you know this chapter is over he's returning to earth and, and that's kind of it there wasn't any like huge moments in this and I thought the artwork was okay for the issue and you know I'll pick up the next one to see what the next chapter of Superman is but I I wasn't so overwhelmed with this one moving on to number seven which is Ant-Man, issue two. And uh, this is an Ant-Man I don't, I'm not as familiar with. Uh, let me get his name. I actually need to find his name. It's Eric. And uh, this is a character that Robert Kirkman made in the early 2000s. And he was the, he's the irredeemable Ant-Man. So he's kind of a villainous Ant-Man. And, uh, you know, I don't have as much of a connection with the character. So uh, I didn't find him very likable in this chapter. Because, you know, he is this little anti-hero. And I feel like he leaned a lot more on the anti side of things. Where I'm like, okay, well, what makes me like him what makes him uh maybe a little bit re redeemable you know I, I know he's an irredeemable character but what makes him fun to read and for me I didn't really find that but I like the art I, I definitely enjoy this kind of silver age style even though this is a more futuristic character um I, I do like the angle of that I'm curious to see the Scott Lang issue because Scott is my favorite Ant-Man um but I just I'm curious what the overall premise of this is going to be I don't really know what it's going towards uh which it's like why have a mini series with all these characters if there's not a larger story at play so we'll see where it ends up going but overall i gave that two stars moving on to number six which is power rangers unlimited death ranger issue one uh this is a book i also kind of got a win this week uh i i usually read the other power rangers books but i haven't been reading the unlimited stuff but i saw death ranger and i thought that'd be related to kind of the current story with jason kind of becoming that death ranger character and uh maybe some of the stuff that uh the power ranger series is dealing with not mighty Morphin, the 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 omega rangers and we definitely get a lot with the omega rangers here but they're not you know the omega rangers we know it's not trini it's not jason it's not zach uh it's these other characters which kind of took me out of it the art's really good though i enjoyed the style um you know I, I enjoyed that aspect but as someone who's not as big of a fan of the overall like hit me with the mythology of uh, Power Rangers I thought this it was a little too heavy-handed in the mythology aspect and didn't really get us into those character moments that I, I that I personally like about Power Rangers and it just didn't feel as connected to the current stories that I thought it may be uh so overall giving that um I believe I think I gave that two and a half maybe I gave it three I gave that two and a half stars, and that is number six. And moving on to number five, which is the Variance issue three. A book, honestly, I probably wouldn't have gotten this issue if if it wasn't for such a light week. I was planning on dropping it just because I'm not a huge fan of the multiverse stories right now. I think there's just too many of them, and they feel a little gimmicky to me. And, you know, as a Jessica Jones fan... I always like seeing something a little different with her and we get still the purple man stuff and I guess the multiverse stuff is supposed to be different but again we've been get, getting to see it with so many different characters that it feels too much like it's going through the motions but the reason this is higher I do think that if you've been enjoying this arc there is some good movement uh, I think the pacing is pretty good for this plot wise and then also you get a little bit more into the the character interactions between the different Jessicas and what makes them different which I thought was interesting but as someone who's not invested in in this arc 
it didn't really wow me. Uh, but the artwork is solid enough for the book. Uh, overall, I give it three stars. Uh, I, I definitely expected something a little bit different from this book. But like I said, if you've been enjoying this series, I think this is a good addition. Moving on to a new issue one, uh, a book I, I'm, I'm happy came out this week because I, I think a lot more people probably gave it a chance because of it, and that's Thunderbolts issue one. Now, I don't think I would have gotten this issue, or at least I would have been more on the fence of getting this issue if it was a bigger week. Um, I think if it was a normal size week, I probably still would have gotten it, but if it was a tremendously big week, I, I think it would have been something that I was like, ah, I don't need to read Thunderbolts. I usually don't. Um, but I like Hawkeye a lot. I like Clint, and he's really what makes this issue for me. Uh, if you've been following Clint for a long time and in his different miniseries, The West Coast Avengers, you get a lot of that background here. So uh, it's definitely for people that have enjoyed Hawkeye. I do think the team was rather rushed to bring them together, and you do need to read other series to kind of get the gist of what's going on, especially Devil's Reign, where Luke Cage becomes mayor. You definitely need to get a gist from there, uh, which I didn't really love Devil's Reign, and I don't really... I actually I actually didn't love how connected to the overall Marvel Universe this was. I kind of wish it was its own side thing. But uh, I had a fun time. I thought the dialogue was a lot of fun. I'm curious to see what these characters are going to do together. But it also kind of feels like a mosh posh of like, oh, we kind of just need to get these characters together and, and not... It, and it wasn't didn't feel as organic as I think it could have. Uh, but, you know, the artwork is cartoony. It's comedic. So if you're looking for that type... Honestly, a very West Coast Avengers style book. Um, I, this definitely feels like a, a predecessor uh, to that original West Coast Avengers. So um, I, I might pick up issue two. I don't know. I'm a little bit on the fence with it. But I enjoyed issue one enough that I'm, I'm happy I picked it up. So overall, giving that three stars. And that is number four. Moving on to number three which is an amazing fantasy issue 1000. As a Spider-Man fan, I had a, a really good time with this. I actually think there's a lot of um, good short stories here. Now, you know, if you're looking for an anthology where it's like, you have to pick this up because this changes Spider-Man forever. It's not that, it's very much just like, here's a fun short story with some, you know, creators that have done a lot for Spider-Man. Uh, and some of my favorites, uh, Dan Slott, I thought did a really, really good job on his Spider-Man story with like an older Mary Jane and, and just seeing like him being on the verge of death and it ends up being because of uh, a burglar and not because of, like the vulture or whatever. So that was interesting. Um, I'm trying to see what other ones there are here. That, that was definitely the one that uh, stood out to me. There's another one where you just get to see more of uh, his connection with a um, with a burglar as, again as well. So I thought that was a pretty good opener. Um, we got Neil Gaiman in this. We have some Spider Verse elements as well. So one thing I enjoyed about this a lot is that I feel like um, it really catered to all Spider Man fans. Where it's like, oh, do you like the more um, slice of life aspect of Spider-Man. Uh, well, here's a Mary Jane story with Spider-Man. Now, it's very Spider-Man stories, though. It's not Peter Parker stories, which maybe was the thing that was missing here. But I really think as, like, a fan of Spider-Man, you get all the elements of what makes him a good hero. Uh, and I enjoy them. I had a good time with this. I think it was worth the, the, the money, but I do think you have to be a hardcore Spider-Man fan to really appreciate it. Uh, because other than that, it's just, you know, kind of short stories. Um, because you're not getting, like, that big cliffhanger like I mentioned. Uh, so giving that three and a half stars and that is number three. Moving on to number two, I didn't even know this was coming out so soon and that is Neverlanders uh, graphic novel. And again, maybe in another week, I don't know if I would have had time to read a whole graphic novel, but there there wasn't as many comics this week, so I was able to, to get through it. And I'm glad I did. You know, I think this... Uh, there's really highlights what Tom Taylor is good at in comics, which is just bringing some really fun energy to comics again. And uh, you get that. It's a retelling of Peter Pan from the point of view of these uh, homeless kids, runaways. And they end up in Neverland. There's some good twists and turns about the Peter Pan um, mythology, including uh, who is their version of Captain Hook. And I, I do think they did a good job of getting us into the characters. Um, I don't know if they're... There was a moment where I felt like so sucked in. Um, maybe if this was an issue by issue basis, I would have felt more attached. I feel like the graphic novel experience made me feel very one and done about it. Where I was like, oh, that was really fun for the moment. I kind of wish that moment lasted five months. Where I was like, oh, I can't wait for the next chapter. Because I feel like this actually would have been a better miniseries and then collected as a graphic novel. But I get why it was a graphic novel because this is targeted towards a YA audience for sure. This is very much like, you know, if you enjoy manga, if you enjoy, you know, the fantastical style of, of those stories, pick this up. This is for 
people younger than me to read it. And, and, and those um, readers are not usually picking up single issues. They are usually picking up these, these graphic novels. So definitely in a business standpoint, I knew why they did this, but I think as a reader, I would have enjoyed this even more if it was a mini series so I could really live with these characters for a little while. Uh, but overall, like I said, the artwork is just kind of out of this world. The characters are really easy to get into. It's fun. Uh, there's a couple of twists and turns in there. Uh, so overall, I thought it was a, a pretty fun book. So giving that three and a half stars, and that is number two. Moving on to number one, speaking of fun, uh, and that is DC's Saved by the Bell Reeve, issue one. Uh, this almost uh, fell off my radar. I didn't, I think, again, in another week, if I had a lot of books, I don't know if I would have even known this was a book, uh, but I'm glad I did. I, I, I like high school stories a lot, and that's kind of the theme of this book, is like, all right, we're all going back to school. Um, you know, what does that look like in the DC universe? And uh, it comes in a perfect time where kids are actually going back to school. And uh, there's a lot, what I really appreciated with this, and I think DC is really hearing us on this, is like, oh, you know, we get a lot of Batman, but how about the cult favorites? Where are we getting their stories from? And this was really a book of cult favorites. We had Gotham Academy, we had uh, Tiny Titans, we had a Green Arrow story. Um, yeah, of course you have some Batman stuff too, but they're Super Sons, you know, Super Sons instead of just a Batman story. We had Batgirl and Nightwing. I thought it was just a nice um, uh, a nice variety of books where I feel like a lot of times with these anthologies like I mean a good example is the Spider-Man book as much as I enjoyed that it was all just Spider-Man stories you know there wasn't uh, too much diversity in that regard but this was like all very different style of stories where uh, the Tiny Titans one is hysterical as a Tiny Titans fan and then you go to like the more mystery side YA side with Gotham Academy and I just thought it was a really well balanced book and I enjoyed a majority of these stories as well as someone who does enjoy YA storytelling and enjoy high school storytelling. So overall I gave that four stars. Uh, I think you're going to either find your new favorite or find out that your favorite is in here. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this is Comic Uno. Let me know in the comments below what were your favorite comics of the week. That way you have a chance to be featured on the channel. Uh, but last week the viewers pick of the week was Minor Threats Issue 1, and here are some comments about that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is Comic Uno, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.